So I, <clears throat> I hope everybody's got a big appetite after a morning uh, of incredible uh, panels uh, to uh, get you excited. And uh, I just want to start, I'll be back up in a few minutes, but just get us started by saying welcome to our traditional soy luncheon. Here, we, I don't know how uh, uh, many years now, it's got to be about 15 or 16 years we've been doing this. And um, the, uh, with the uh, Iowa Soybean Association at first and the Soy Foods Council and Linda Funk, where are you? And Kirk Leeds, Kirk, uh, here, there they are. And had this, you know, they first came to me and said, we should do this, soy luncheon. And I said, oh, soy luncheon. I know I worked in Asia, we have soy sauce. Um, what, what else is there? So I got a real education. And uh, then we have, uh, in addition to Iowa Soybean Association, Soy Foods Council, United Soybean Board, and then, um, uh, soy in uh, 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 in global uh, health. So Tim Bardol is here today, and Polly Ruland from representing the soy industry. Thank you so much for your sponsorship uh, of this event and other things we do. So everybody, take a minute and look at the menu. We work very hard on this uh, with uh, with Linda. We have tastings and. Uh, that to uh, pick out the right uh, items, and then uh, we have designs for the menu. So a lot went into this, so please take a look. See what wonderful uh, dishes that we're having in this. Enjoy your lunch. Uh, I'll be uh, back up in a little while to get our, our program started. So welcome, and thank you to all of the soy organizations for your wonderful support encouragement uh, to us over the years. Let's have a round of applause. For... <clears throat> that is if my voice holds out. So I, I hope everybody enjoyed their lunch or are enjoying your lunch. You can keep eating, but we're gonna start our program. So uh, let's have a, a round of applause for the wonderful soy meal that we just enjoyed. Huh? Wasn't it terrific? Yeah. Uh, I want to acknowledge a couple of people who are, who are here. First of all, John Ruan III, the chairman of the World Food Prize. John, thank you, your family support is what saved the World Food Prize. Stand up so everybody can. That's, I guess standing up is uh, more difficult. And Simon Groot is here, Simon, our 2019 World Food Prize laureate. And that, the, I know we have, we have the Dutch delegation here with Simon, the Mexican delegation here with Secretary of Agriculture, the African delegation that was here. We were out dancing late last night. Uh, uh, but I'm here, come on. Uh, and that, so, uh, and that, uh, Minister Chantal Sun, uh, my wonderful friend from Cambodia, who stole the show yesterday at the symposium. That's it. Uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'll introduce, or we will have the minister, our special guest uh, of honor and keynote speaker, be uh, introduced uh, later in the program. Uh, all of my fellow compatriot ambassadors who are here, we did such a terrific program. Thank you all for, for being here as well. Uh, the Borlaug family uh, here, Julie and Jeannie and Bill, thank you. Uh, the terrific uh, CEOs panel from this morning they were here and then the uh, so the uh, <laughs> power chicks where are the power chicks is Je Jessica Edelman said that uh, and said I could say that who had the food systems program or here wow what a morning and then the startups panel so it was a great morning but we have a terrific afternoon program but uh, as well. So uh, at, at our uh, soy luncheon, 
that we have and um, I've seen our, our sponsors again. Uh, we highlight, this is the first time you symposium attendees have been together with the students from the Global Youth Institute. So when Norm Borlaug and John Ruan Sr. started it 25 years ago, uh, the participants would have filled one table. There was 14 kids, maybe two tables with the teachers, and that uh, now uh, we have about 500 teachers, students, youth institute participants. That's in addition to the 850 or 900 who registered for the symposium. So now here's the moment all the students in the Global Youth Institute stand up. We can see you. Come on, stand up. These are high school students from 26 U.S. states, 10 foreign countries, including uh, Mexico and, and China, and I'll get in trouble, start, start listing them when I leave out, but they, they have been through their Youth Institute uh, to be part of all of this. In addition, we have our Wallace Carver Fellows. Where are you? Stand up, Wallace Carver Fellows. These are, these are students who went through the Global Youth Institute and then did a program with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And then we have Borlaug Ruan interns. Where are you? Stand up. And that. These are the high school students we send around the world. And that to, uh, for our program. Then we have, so none of, these, none of these students would be here except for one other group. The teachers, where are the teachers? Stand up. The teachers who inspire every one of these students. Then we have uh, youth coordinators in states at land grant universities who are making all this happen. Where are the youth coordinators uh, in there? Yes, stand up. Then we have the global guides. Global guides who are here, and um, this uh, um, now who again, global ag uh, a program for this uh, brings uh, elements of this to the uh, to the classroom, and that so you know this is a huge program, and you must think I have a staff of about 20 people or so to do this, but there's really um, three members of our three, four members of my staff who do these programs. Uh, over here, Keegan Kautsky, who's been a part of the program. He, he, he was a student at Iowa State, uh, first or second year, and, and he bumped into Dr., and he was interning with us and bumped into Dr. Borlaug, and uh, I'd say it's changed his life forever. And uh, Borlaug said, why aren't you in Africa? So he went there, and I called and said, why aren't you back in Des Moines? And so he's back. Uh, and there, so, and then uh, Kelsey Terrell. Kelsey is our director of Global <laughs> Youth Institute. Yeah. Morgan Day, part of the, that's him. And Ellen Franzenberg, who directs our international internship program. And they're at the table with Madeline Goebel, who's run the Iowa Hunger Summit, but, and she had 200 students there, but she doesn't count as part of the youth. Uh, thing. So, so that's 50% that's of the entire World Food Prize staff at that table. They make all of this happen. So thank you for being such a terrific, dedicated group. And uh, this um, World Food Day yesterday uh, brings back a lot of memories. It was Norman Borlaug Day, but there's one other event in uh, 2015. One of my dearest friends, a passionate advocate for 
global food security, for ending hunger. Um, someone who worked at the U.S. mission to the U.N. food agencies with Senator George McGovern and came every year, was involved in everything, including the youth programs. And he came to the World Food Prize on um, the day we had our ceremony, which was October 16th. So it was World Food Day, Norman Borlaug Day. He went out and gave a lecture, came to the ceremony, came back down here to this hotel. We had a drink together at the bar. I had Coke. That's it. You know, I didn't have a Borlauger. And, then, and um, he went to his room and never woke up. So if you're going to pick the way you leave this earth, it was the perfect way for David Lambert to leave. A place he loved, a event he loved, doing things he loved about global food security. And near Iowa State University, where he was a great friend, particularly to the Iowa uh, State Seed Center, run by his very good friend and the director, Dr. Manjit Misra, who's here. I had to call his son, Walker, tell him his dad was gone. So Dr. Misra and Iowa State University created the David Lambert Hunger Fighter Memorial Scholarship Award. And each year, at this event, to honor the memory of David Lambert, we present the winner to be recognized uh, in this. Um, and uh, we're so very, very privileged to have the president of Iowa State here today, Dr. Wendy Winterstein, who is an enormous collaborator with us in the youth programs. She hosts the Iowa Youth Institute every year on her campus and she's a member of our Council of Advisors. So I would like to uh, invite to the stage Dr. Winterstein, Dr. Misra, and the winner of this year's David Lambert Memorial Scholarship, Nolan Monahan. Please come up. So uh, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Amy to go back one slide to the um, film slide and that. So, uh, yes, come on, come on over here. This is, yes, don't be shy. That's, yeah. Um, I want to also note that you see, see here's Dr. Misra. He's... You know, he's a seed scientist, he's an ag guy, but he's also the executive producer of an award-winning movie and that, that Walker Lambert made. And I'm so sorry Walker couldn't be here today. It's called Seeds, the Diversity of Wonder, and they won the silver winner of the Telly Awards. So this is in the documentary about uh, agriculture and about science. So Dr. Misra and I are, are planning, and we'll be looking for investors. Um, we're going to produce the Bollywood version of the Green Revolution. And uh, we're just looking for somebody who can play the part of Norman Borlaug and is able to uh, dance on screen. So um, Jeannie, Bill, Julie, you know, know somebody. But Nolan Monahan, one of those students who was out here, right? Yes. yes, was out here, was in our programs, in our youth programs, and has demonstrated that excellence that all of our 
all of our alums do, but have been judged by the selection committee to be the recipient of the David Lambert Memorial Scholarship for this year. Congratulations, Nolan. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I have here the envelope and that, so passing this. Put it, put it, yes? Yes. Put it in your pocket and take it up to Iowa State and deposit it in your tuition account, right? Yeah, see? That was, that, was, that was the one talking point that was highlighted. Pretty sure. And that, and that. So, about that. I got it. This is, you know, such illustrious parents. We're so proud of these young students. They go on to do just amazing things. Norm Borlaug was about inspiring the next generation. Here's a young man who was inspired by Norman Borlaug, by Iowa State to do and that. So congratulations again. So, <laughs> yes. so, so you wanna say something about the movie? I, I, do, I do, I do. Um, this movie is uh, about the value and the beauty of seeds. We sometimes think of just the science. Science is absolutely important, but we forget the beauty. And seeds are beautiful. So this film depicts that. And when we uh, worked on this uh, film, Walker and I, uh, Ambassador, you are a strong champion and supporter of this movie. It's not uh, quite the quality of the Avengers, the end game. <laughs> But, but uh, we are very grateful for your support. And I have a small gift for the ambassador, a copy of the movie and a cup that is 100% made out of maize so that the ambassador can watch the movie while having a cup of hot chocolate. Uh, uh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I thank you, Manjit. Uh, that means uh, a lot uh, to me. Uh, I think I have a cameo. I haven't seen the movie yet. I just know the award. So, unless I got left on the cutting room floor, which I think if I was the producer, I would probably do that. But the star, come on, give me a break. And that. So why don't I invite you and, and Nolan to go back to your seats and um, President Winterstein who I think as Dean of Agriculture developed the College of Agriculture and Life Science at Iowa State way beyond, I, I have to be careful, a lot of deans out here, you know, they support our program uh, and that, but spectacularly, and which is why she was chosen to be the president of Iowa State <laughs> University, an inspired choice. Thank you. Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ambassador Quinn. Uh, what a wonderful week we've all had. Of course, tonight will be the culmination of this wonderful week as we recognize Simon Groot. Uh, but thank you, uh, Ambassador Quinn, for your great leadership. This really is a very special and bittersweet year for the World Food Prize as we commemorate the final year of Ambassador Quinn's tenure as president. It's a tenure that has been nothing short of extraordinary. For two decades, Ambassador Quinn has worked tirelessly to preserve and lift up the legacy of Dr. Norman Borlaug. He has elevated the World Food Prize to international prominence, now referred to as the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture. And he has brought international visibility to Iowa's role in the global hunger fight in a way that no one else has ever done. Ambassador Quinn has also done an exceptional job of inspiring and encouraging future generations of global hunger fighters 
through the World Food Prize Global Youth Institute and through the Iowa Youth Institute. Iowa State University is proud to partner each year with the World Food Prize to host the Iowa Youth Institute and welcome hundreds of hunger fighters to our campus. At Iowa State, we are inspired by Ambassador Quinn's vision, and that is why we have decided to expand the set of scholarships offered by the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences that are exclusively for participants of the Iowa and Global Youth Institutes. And I'm especially pleased to announce today that these scholarships will be named in honor of Ambassador Ken Quinn. It is because of Ambassador Quinn's vision for World Food Prize Youth Programming that the Global and Iowa Youth Institutes are among the top STEM initiatives in the country. His vision has spread not only to many states, but also to many countries, inspiring a new generation of hunger fighters around the world. During Ambassador Quinn's first year as president, about two dozen students participated in youth programs. Two dozen. Today, the World Food Prize works with more than 10,000 students from 30 states and 10 countries, including more than 300 Iowa high school students who attend the Iowa Youth Institute every year at Iowa State University. Because Ambassador Quinn has been so successful in bringing the legacy of Dr. Norman Borlaug into the mainstream, countless numbers of young people and professionals alike are inspired to be the next norm. Ambassador Quinn's vision for youth programs has provided wonderful opportunities for students to connect with Iowa State University, to visit our beautiful campus, explore our state of art facilities, and meet our world-class faculty. And now with the expansion of these scholarships in Ambassador Quinn's name, an Iowa State education will become more accessible for the next norm and future hunger fighters. The Ambassador Kenneth Quinn World Food Prize Iowa State University Scholarship Program will honor students for their level of commitment for fighting hunger and advocating for food security around the globe. The scholarship program will also ensure that future generations continue to be inspired not only by Dr. Borlaug's achievements, but also by Ambassador Quinn's legacy of service. The global hunger fight is one of the most urgent global challenges and is also one of the most complex. That is why we need smart, motivated young people with a variety of talents and skills to join this fight. We are excited to see what the next norm will come up with to address this challenge and we're equally excited to see what the next Ken Quinn will contribute to this critically important issue. Perhaps the next Norm or the next Ken are in this room just waiting for the opportunity to unleash their innovative ideas or groundbreaking discoveries. So I'd like to, be, to recognize a few of the students that are gonna come to Iowa State University next year on the Ambassador Quinn Scholarship. And if these individuals would stand and be recognized, uh, we, we would really appreciate that. So Nick Dipmer will be studying ag systems technology. Abby Fringskin is going into ag life sciences exploration. Kiana Hackett plans to major in biology. Leah Merrick plans to join our global resource systems program. Christopher Meyer will go into agronomy. Hannah Scheisel plans to major in animal science. And Sarah Schroeder will go into the Culinary Food Science Program. A round of applause for these great young men and women. And congratulations to the ambassador. And a big thanks to him for everything that he has done to really help our youth see that they have an opportunity in helping us address the global hunger fight ahead of us. Thank you, Ambassador Quinn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh.
I, I, I had to ask President Winterstein if it's okay to hug the president of Iowa State, and she told me it was okay. Yeah. So, so there, it's not often where I'm at lunch and I have tears in my eyes, but you have touched me so profoundly. You know, I have an honorary degree from Iowa State. I treasure it. I always cheer for the Cyclones against the Hawkeyes. <laughs> and that, but, but today, and, and to have these students in the room who have a scholarship with my name on it, That's right. beyond anything I ever might have, might have dreamed of. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you from Thank the bottom you. of my heart. Thank you, Ambassador. So <clears throat> I got to pull myself together here so we can move on to the uh, keynote address and to introduce our distinguished keynote speaker, I want to invite a member of our Council of Advisors, a great friend and someone who carries Norman Borlaug's legacy forward every day, Dr. Elsa Morano, the director of the Borlaug Institute at Texas A&M University that Norm loved along with loving Iowa. El Did I hear that there's some Aggies in the house? Very good. Well, good afternoon. Um, before I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Victor Villalobos, I'd like to first recognize uh, Dr. Miguel Garcia Vinda, who is the Under Secretary of Agriculture, who is also here. Um, I will tell you that having served as Under Secretary in the U.S. Department of Agriculture myself, I know that we Under Secretaries are the ones who get things done. So, uh, so welcome, sir. Bienvenido. Well, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you um, Dr. Victor Villalobos, Mexico's Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, and welcome him to the World Food Prize. Minister Villalobos has had an incredible career as a leader in both the science and the policy of agriculture. As a scientist, he demonstrated his broad thinking by earning degrees in agricultural engineering, plant genetics, and plant morphogenics. That led him to begin a career as research professor at the Postgraduate College of Montecillo, Mexico. Well, Minister Villalobos is somewhat rare among scientists in that he is also an excellent manager and leader. It doesn't necessarily go together. Well, these dual abilities led him to then serve as director of crop improvement at CATIE, which is a tropical agricultural research and higher education center, and you may not know that it is the very first graduate school in agricultural sciences in Latin America. Well, being considered someone who gets things done, Minister Villalobos was tapped to serve as principal biotechnology official at FAO in Rome, where he coordinated projects in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. He then went on to serve as undersecretary of natural resources in Mexico. So see, I told you, we undersecretaries know how to get things done. Anyway, I first met Dr. Villalobos, Minister Villalobos, during his vi service as uh, Director General of the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture, IICA, where he served for many years. In fact, he is considered by many as a true leader in the region, with his long and distinguished service as Director General having been praised by the U.S. Foreign Agriculture Service as extraordinary, and by ministers of agriculture from member countries as being a first-rate partner. He's developed modern agriculture model equipped for the challenges facing us today. And by the way, uh, Dr. Garcia Vinda, uh, you served as IICA's representative to the U.S. in Washington, D.C., so we have two uh, of IICA's most accomplished former leaders among us here this afternoon. Well, there could be, in my opinion, um, no better choice made by Mexico's president than to select Dr. Villalobos to serve as his agriculture minister, a tremendous testament to his leadership 
and of the understanding and body of work he has built over his professional life to help elevate farmers through innovative research and policy. In fact, you may know that Mr. Minister Villalobos is considered to be the father of Mas Agro, an incredibly successful project led by Mexico in collaboration with CIMIT that is credited with having changed more than 500,000 farmers' lives by increasing their crop yields and securing their harvest. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, help me give a warm welcome to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development of Mexico, the one and only Dr. Victor Villalobos. Well, thank you, Elsa. Thank you very much for the presentation. Muchas gracias desde el fondo de mi corazón. Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I, I would like to begin by thanking Ambassador Queen for his generous invitation to speak to the young people assembled in this room who will become the leaders of tomorrow's agriculture. You will be the leaders of tomorrow's agriculture. I am also honored to speak before the distinguished participants of the Borlo Dialogue International Symposium, who are, in their own right, outstanding leaders from all corners of the globe. I stand before you today as a Mexican Minister of Agriculture, which is truly a milestone of my, in my career. I'm very proud to be part of the President Lopez Obrador's cabinet. My passion for agriculture began many years ago when I started dreaming be part of scientific farmer who could contribute to making agriculture an engine of development for Mexico. For this, I began my studies at the National School of Agriculture, now the Autonomous University of Chapingo. That is where I first met Norman Borlo, the man who saved one billion lives from starvation by applying science to agriculture. I remember well the last time I saw Norman. Norman had always been very clear about his expectations of anyone who devote his life to agriculture development. On that last meeting, that took place in March 2009, just 10 months before I became the general director of the International Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture, AICA. At that meeting, Norman said to me, take your new responsibility seriously for putting innovation and research at the service of farmers in the Americas. AICA is devoted to research and development opportunities for farmers, field technicians, agronomists, breeders, policymakers, and development agents in all countries of the Western Hemisphere, especially in Latin America and the Caribbean, also known as the LAC region. As general director, I felt committed to these goals. Before I left, for AICA, however, Dr. Borlow himself inspired me to write a linesman's book in clear language that explained biotechnology. Biotechnology in agriculture. Norman honored my, myself by writing the prologue of my book. Both Norman and I share the convictions that science and technology are guiding principles that do not belong only to universities or laboratories or companies. Science, innovation, and technology belong to the field. And to me, that's, that field is the farmland, especially the land of growing by small farmers around the world. Thankfully, I have a region to focus on, unlike Norman, who has the whole world to be worried about. My task, my task IICA, includes performance, 
vision and strategy, improvement of social equity, systematic competitiveness, sustainability, food security, territorial development, and the productivity of agri-food and agro-industrial systems in the southern cone of the Americas. I further assist countries in the Americas in complying with the World Health Organization agreement to the application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures. These measures are important because they are giving farmers access to new markets, higher profits, and more sustainable, inclusive farming. But sometimes talking about small farmers, or, or farmers for that matter, is too general. People sometimes ask me if I have a preferred crop. I think we all do. I have been able to work with many crops, but two of them stand out. Both are grown by small farmers in the lag region. I think many people in this room will find it very difficult to live without one of them, which is coffee that we are enjoying right now. The other one has also become a very popular choice for urban markets, cacao or cocoa, which originated in Mesoamerica. Who doesn't like chocolate? Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, when I was working at the Tropical Agriculture Research and Education Center, CATIE, we evaluated what was become the most complete Arabica coffee germoplast bank in, or the bank of genetic resources in the Western Hemisphere. This bank is very important because it will it holds the key to the greatest diversity of genetic resistance to pests and diseases that have even devastating effects in coffee uh, growers, especially in Central and South America. A few years later, AICA launched a regional cooperative program for the technological development of modernization of coffee production in Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Costa Rica, which lead the foundation of a regional warming system to fight coffee rust. And I am proud to announce that more recently, I'm talking about this year, 2019, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic have joined this effort, which become the regional early warming system for coffee leaf rust. I believe this is a modest but a clear example of the type of inter-American collaboration that we need to have in place to address regional issues that link agriculture, migration, and peace. Another related situation that we need to address collectively is that a water management which is undoubtedly a most pressing issue. During my time at ICA, we became a proud member of the World Water Council to share knowledge and to design water management policies. As a result, we came out with four hemispheric recommendations to increase water productivity in agriculture. These four measures endorsed by all the ministers of agriculture in the Americas call upon of regional governments to strengthening capabilities and action framework for local agriculture measures. To promote integrated water management to mitigate climate change and achieve agriculture sustainability. To invest in research and innovation to improve water productivity in agriculture and to develop capabilities and offer training opportunities to people in agriculture. If you take a closer look at these recommendations, you find that we are basically advocating for an integrated developmental approach. This is what Mexico and the CIMIT 
have been doing together in the past few years. The CIMIT is the Spanish abbreviation for the International Center for Maize and Wheat Improvement. And what can I say about CIMIT? This is where Norman developed his Nobel Prize Green Revolution work on draft wheat. This is where Norman was invited by the Rockefeller Foundation. And this is the center of the most successful wheat and maize breeding programs of the world. After Borlo's groundbreaking, groundbreaking work, dozens of new high-yielding techniques have been developed, and I would like to cite a few. Dr. Sanja Rajaram, the 2014 World Food Prize laureate, continued Norman's effort for developing over 400 wheat varieties grown all over the world. CIMIT provides the breeding platform for the first woman, a Mexican, who won the World Food Prize in the year 2000 for introducing quality maize varieties to combat child malnutrition in Central and South America. The late Dr. Evangelina Villegas shared his prize with uh, Dr. Basal, another distinguished scientist who worked at CIMIT. Also, in 2014, Dr. Brand Govers, that is here with us, earned the Nor uh, Norman Borlos Field Award for Research and Application from the Rockefeller Foundation for contributing to the integrated approach to sustainable food production that I mentioned before, making this approach more available to not only farmers in Mexico, but also to farmers in Guatemala, and more recently, in Colombia. From all this, I am sure you can see how close I have always been to the CIMIT, and felt more than happy to have contributed to its many achievements. Back in 2009, when I was head of the International Agriculture Affairs of the Ministry of Agriculture, I was part of the team that put together Dr. Norman E. Borlow Research Fund. This was a modest, only $1 million fund that aims to boast innovation in maize and wheat production systems. The fund evolved into multi-million dollar project called Masagro that has been widely acknowledged by the World Food Prize and many other succeeding and improving Mexico's maize and wheat production system in making them more inclusive and more sustainable. The government in Mexico is committed to expanding several additional programs such as Masagro and to helping adapt its sustainable intensification model to other countries around the world. For that reason, the Ministry of Agriculture, or SADER, provides funding and logistic support to the continued implementation of this sustainable development program as well as by 2030. Mexico seeks to replicate this experience in the northern part of Central America to raise living standards, promote peace, and ultimately reduce forced migration from those countries. What is needed is a strengthening of multilateral engagement and finding to allow people to remain in their own land with acceptable quality of life. The Mexican Ministry of Agriculture is working with them on this task, which should ultimately result in reduced forced migration. Many of us answer Norman's call to effort forming humanitarian crisis 50 years ago. Today, we face a similar challenge in Central America and in other regions of Africa and Asia. Once again, we must fight isolatorism and also address the challenge to our food security and to our shared future together in this planet. Agriculture, prosperity, and peace are inexplicably linked together. Dysfunctional and broken agri-food systems force people that have 
have few options for their living hood to migrate looking for a better future. If there is any sector globally that can generate grow and jobs, is agriculture. Any last answer to environmental degradation, violence, famine, and forced migration demands our best collective effort. This is not just one generation fight. It is the legacy and lasting legacy of Norman Borlaug. It is also the best attempt for anybody who wishes to take part of this Borlaug's dialogue. And thank you, thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you for that incredible presentation about what you're doing and what you have been doing to not only in Mexico, but all of Central Latin America. Uh, your, uh, your leadership is so inspiring. And you know, when Norman Borlaug first went to Mexico, there was very little cooperation and interchange. You're taking it to a new level. And I would say now we need the type of leadership that you are providing personally through your position more than ever. So let's join with me in thanking Minister for being here today, for giving us this incredible mission, but most of all to encourage him continuing forward in your important message. And, and, and as an old friend of the World Food Prize, even before you were Secretary of Agriculture, you have a standing invitation to be back here. Even though I won't be here to welcome you, I'm, uh, I, I'm sure my successor would, uh, would share that view. So now, students, all stay put. You know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they'll listen uh, and, and that. And, that. and I, I want to uh, conclude lunch encourage everyone to uh, carefully, but move down to the symposium room, the afternoon's beginning, and uh, it is a action-packed and uh, marvelous program, beginning with a retrospective on Bill Gates' message from this stage 10 years ago, and that Roger Voorhees is here to do that, and then we'll be on to the launch of the Borlaug Adeshina Fellows. Thank you all for being here. Um, oh, oh, good.